So ever since I started this channel, people have been occasionally asking me where I'm from. And even though I always answer that question, I find it to be kind of irrelevant because most of my content is about me in a garage working on an 80s sports car. And it would look pretty much the same whether I had Brazilian, Russian or American citizenship. But today we're going to change that because today we won't be in the garage and we're doing something very new and very different for this channel. And we're also going to use the opportunity to answer the question where I live in a proper manner. So what we're going to do is that I'm going to get on a bicycle. I'm going to put this thing on my head. Goodbye haircut. And I'm going to cycle through my city streets and I'm going to show you my city and also tell you a little bit about it and my country as well. Of course, we won't be forgetting the MR2 and we will be talking about the MR2 along the way and I will explain why summer is slipping through our fingers and why I'm riding a bicycle instead of blasting my bike carb 4AG through my city streets. So this is going to be our steed for today. This is my Trek 6700, which I bought for a few hundred bucks just a few days ago. It's a really old model. And funnily enough, it's also my first ever bicycle. But that's a topic for another day and another video. Right now, let's get on the bike, let's get touristy, and let's do some sightseeing. So where do I live? Well, I live in a tiny little country in Southeast Europe in the Balkans called Bosnia and Herzegovina. And we are in its capital city called Sarajevo. So a few very basic facts about Bosnia and Herzegovina. It is a very tiny country. Uh, it has around three and a half million people living in it. And the capital Sarajevo has around 300,000 people living in it. To put that into perspective, major cities around the world have in excess of 10 million people living in them. And for example, Berlin, the capital of Germany, which has, I think, 3.7 million or so living in it, alone has more people than all of Bosnia. Uh, so as you can see, a very, very tiny country. When it comes to climate, Bosnia has a uh, pretty hot, kind of moist summers sometimes sometimes they're nice we have all four seasons we have a full on spring winter uh, autumn and summer and winters are often pretty harsh when it comes to geography Bosnia is mostly mountains with a bit of flatlands in the north and northeast. Also because of its mountains it has awesome mountain roads. However that doesn't mean anything when your car is on wooden jack stands for most of its life. So right now where I'm cycling through is called the Wilson's Lane and yes you guys in the US it has been named in honor of President Woodrow Wilson. So right now I'm going to shut up a bit because I'm kind of running out of breath and I'm going to cycle to our first site of the day where I'm going to tell you a bit more about the country's history. Incidentally, this is the high school where I went to, in case you ever wonder. So another interesting thing is that the tourist season in Sarajevo is pretty much over. So they have started working on building the city a bit, which is a great opportunity to show off my non-existent bicycle skills. They were building this road and it's a great place to see what the Trek 6700 can do.
So the pretty building right behind us is called the National Museum. What it really is, is actually the Natural History Museum because that's what the exhibits inside are. It's one of the oldest and prettiest museums in the city. It was a few years ago, it was briefly closed because a lot, there was a lack of money to keep it open. Fortunately, that was fixed and it's now open to the public and you can see uh, they're all in. You can see school kids uh, going inside the museum. Right now, I'm next to the road, so there might be some noise. I hope my microphone can keep up. So this is also a good opportunity to talk about the history of Bosnia. Now, there is archaeological proof of people living in Bosnia as early as the Neolithic age. And the first people living here were Illyrians and some Celtic tribes. These were uh, fighting with the Romans then, and later they were replaced by Slavic peoples. Then, uh, in the early Middle Ages, Bosnia was its own country called the Kingdom of Bosnia. It was then later conquered in the 15th uh, century, and all the way from the 15th century uh, to the 19th century, it was under the Ottoman Empire. After that, it, it was under the Austro-Hungarians, and then uh, after the Second World War, it was part of Yugoslavia. As you may or may not know, Yugoslavia was a communist country that, that ceased to exist in the 90s, and it was composed of Bosnia, Serbia, Croatia, Slovenia, Montenegro, and Macedonia. The peoples of Yugoslavia couldn't find a way to separate peacefully, so we had some very nasty wars in the 90s going on in Bosnia and Croatia as well. Now, if you're a bit older, this is probably uh, how you remember Bosnia uh, from these wars in the 90s, which were definitely horrible and atrocious, but it is now in the past. The country has definitely recovered and has recently been uh, experiencing a sort of a touristic boom. When it comes to the history of Sarajevo, Sarajevo first started to exist uh, during the Ottoman times in the very, very early 16th century. And before that, during the Middle Ages, uh, much smaller cities like Travnik and Jajce in Bosnia were the capital and were far more important than Sarajevo. So now let's move on to our next site, which is right there. I don't know if you can see it, which is the main government and parliament buildings. And there I'm going to tell you a little bit about politics. Unfortunately, I forgot my sunglasses and the sun is going right into my eyes. But when the going gets tough, the tough get going. So, uh, what's behind me? is the old building, this one, this is the main parliament building, and this is this one, the high one, this one, this is the main, you know, government executive building. So when it comes to politics, uh, unfortunately, Bosnia sucks. It may be a very small country, but it has one of the biggest governments in the world. Actually, it's probably the biggest government in the world. The country, it has two entities and one district. Then it also has cantons and then it also has municipalities. And these two government buildings are one of just, you know, a whole plethora of government buildings because we have state level ministries, we have entity ministries, and then we have cantonal ministries. So when you think, when you take all of that into account uh, and the country has three and a half million people, probably about 10% of the population are civil servants or ministers or I don't know presidents or something also we have not one but three presidents and they rotate it's all super super weird and super inefficient and the story of why uh, that has happened and it is as it is is too long and too complicated for this video so I'll just leave it at that and say that the citizens of Bosnia hope that this sort of inefficient political situation is going to change soon. Uh, so right now, we're also on one of uh, the main squares, the most important squares in the city. This is a huge shopping center along with a Swiss hotel. It has been built recently. It has all of the major 
name brands you can see everywhere else in the world. So shopping, 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 boring, boring, boring. Uh, across the street, another shopping center. I have already showed you that hotel. If you have been watching the news in the 90s, you, have pro you probably remember this guy. So what we're going to do right now is that I'm going to get back on the bicycle and we're going to cycle some more right into the heart of the city where I'm going to talk to you about economy. see one of the city's main modes of transport this is a tram and as you can see they're pretty old and very very noisy since we're talking about politics another thing that's interesting that's going on right now is that the city is holding not the city actually the country is holding its big elections in October and you will probably notice that the city is plastered with ads just like these ones of various people trying to get into the parliament, into government, into wherever. So this is what I have been telling you about. One, two, three politicians, four, five, and a Coca-Cola ad. And of course a Mercedes ad. Thank you Coca-Cola and Mercedes for breaking up the chain of aspiring government officials. So here we can see a car being towed away and people being angry about it. no car there but that's the truck that tows away cars and here like in most of Europe we don't really tow away cars this truck truck has like a big sort of uh, crane on it and it picks the whole car up lifts it up and drives it away Across the street for this one because the sun was hitting me in the face on that square. It's even hitting me here, but it's a bit better here. Anyway, that's another main square of the city and that's another big shopping center. It's called the BBI Shopping Center. Since we're talking about shopping, let's also talk about the economy. When it comes to economy, Bosnia is on the poor side. The nominal GDP of the country is around 18.5 billion US dollars and the nominal GDP per capita is around 4,800 US dollars which when you compare it to big European countries like France or Germany, it's around 30% of their GDP per capita. When it comes to the currency, the currency is called the convertible mark. For a while after the war in the 90s, we used the Deutsche Mark, but then we changed the convertible mark when the Euro came and one convertible mark is, no sorry, one Euro is 1.95 convertible marks. The mark is fixed to the Euro and whatever the Euro does in terms of fluctuations, that's the same thing that the convertible mark does. When it comes to industry, we have a lot of mountains and therefore we have a lot of ores and we have a relatively developed metal industry and mining industry. We also have some agriculture and tourism has been booming recently. Uh, the war in the 90s, again, I have to mention it, it kind of decimated the country, decreased the GDP by 60%. The country has been slowly recovering and in the last couple of years the situation has definitely been a lot better and in 2017 we have been the third country in the world uh, when it comes to new jobs generated by foreign direct investment that's a, use, a useless statistic uh, unemployment rate is still kind of high and it's around 20 percent but because a lot of people are still employed in the gray economy sector so that's enough economy stats for now and i don't want to risk making this Video boring, so let's get 
back on the bike and let's drive more into the heart of the city where I'm going to show you the old part of the city called Bashchashia. Along the way, we're also going to see some religious monuments. Okay, so we're off the bike and right now we are in the heart of the city and I'm gonna tell you a few words about architecture and coffee. Now, Sarajevo is unique in the fact that it has Ottoman architecture in it, Austro-Hungarian and some of the 70s and 80s communist style architecture as well. Now, right now this part of the city where we are has mostly been built during Austro-Hungarian times and some of it has been built during Yugoslavian times. Here on the left you can see the main uh, city market and this is obviously that Austro-Hungarian stuff I have been telling you about and right across the street here you can see some of that communist stuff. Now right in a few minutes when we uh, drop into Bashtarsia we are going to see some Ottoman stuff. Now when it comes to coffee you probably know that coffee is important in Europe people drink a lot of coffee but coffee is even more so important in the Balkans and probably the most important in Bosnia I do drink an occasional cup of coffee myself but what people do here can be considered uh, Olympics or even a marathon everything is done over a cup of coffee in Bosnia uh, people divorce each other people sign contracts people gossip People do everything over a cup of coffee and we probably drink more coffee per capita than anybody else. I do not know whether these statistics exist, but believe me, people drink a lot of coffee. Now, the coffee that's drunk here isn't the same as the filtered stuff people drink in most of the world. This is the coffee here is you simply take ground coffee, put it in a pot, add some water, and that's basically it. People might try to convince you that that's a Turkish coffee. No, it's not. I've been to Turkey and I've drank Turkish coffee. Bosnian coffee is strong when compared to the filtered stuff, but Turkish coffee is a lot stronger. It, it, it sticks to your teeth. It's weird. But uh, so, no, I guess people like it. I have nothing against Turkish coffee, of course. Now, if you've been drinking filtered coffee your whole life, your whole life, Bosnian coffee might come off as weird to you. But after a few cups, you might get used to it and it is kind of nice. Now, I also did promise some religious monuments and here we have our first one. And this is a Orthodox church. Let me just pass by the trees. Come on, trees. Let's get closer that way. So this is a Orthodox church and it's the church of the Holy Mother of God. Now, this has been built, as far as I know, in the late 19th century and it's one of the biggest Orthodox churches in the Balkans. Now Sarajevo is unique in fact that it has the three main monotheistic religions Catholicism, Orthodox Christianity and Islam very well represented in the city. There's a lot of monuments in the entire city of all the three religions and there's also quite a few synagogues. Now Bosnia is unique in the, in the fact, see more election people, Bosnia is unique in the fact that it has three constituent peoples and all three are guaranteed equal rights in the constitution. And the three peoples are Bosniaks, Croats and Serbs. Bosniaks being Muslim, Croats being Catholic and Serbs being Orthodox. So next up we have a Catholic religious monument and this is the Cathedral of the Heart of Jesus. It too was built in the late 19th century and in my opinion is one of the prettiest buildings in the city. I'm not a Catholic, I'm not honestly in anything, but I really do like this cathedral. It's one of the symbols of the city and as you can see it is often visited by tourists and tourist guides talk about it a lot. Uh, I could talk some more about it but in the interest of keeping this video on the short and entertaining side 
Let's keep going towards Bashchashya. Okay, so right now we are crossing the boundary into Bashchashya. And here you can see a little spin and go thing that the city made. And it proclaims Sarajevo as the meeting point of cultures. You spin it and it tells you where you're supposed to go. So this time it's kind of confused, but it tells you either east or west. And here you can see that again, a lot of people taking photos here. Sarajevo meeting of cultures. I think they kind of missed meeting point of cultures, but never mind. That thing up there, if the sun isn't killing the shot, is the clock tower. I'm gonna make some nice footage later on. It's the clock tower of the city, one of the symbols of the city as well, and a very famous attraction. So as you can see, we are in Bashcharsia now, and everything looks very, very different. The shops are smaller, the buildings are smaller, and everything simply looks kind of oriental. And now it's also time for the third religious monument, which is the Ghazi Khusrev Bey's Mosque. And the sun is in our eyes, so let's get in inside and see if we can see it a bit better. Okay, so we are inside the courtyard in front of the Ghazi Khosrav Ben's Mosque. And here you can see the mosque. It was built sometimes in the 16th century by a guy called Ghazi Khosrav Bey. Bey is simply a title in Ottoman times and it's the equivalent of, let's say, a lord or a duke somewhere in the rest of Europe. Okay, so now Let's walk to the rest of Bashcharsia and see some more sights. Here we have the sebi, the brown thing with the green roof. This is a public drinking fountain. And if you Google images for Sarajevo, I bet one of the first five is going to be this thing. It has of course been reconstructed, I think many times over, and it has been built during the Ottoman times. Now, if you're a tourist coming to Sarajevo, Bashcharsha is probably where they're first going to bring you. And what you're going to eat in Bashcharsha is going to be called Chevapi or Chevapchichi. Now, what that really is, is a traditional, is a signature dish of Sarajevo. And what it is, is basically minced meat fingers put in a traditional bread. They are pretty tasty and they are served with onions and optionally cream. They're also, of course, not very healthy. And you can only buy them in packs of five. So you cannot order three or six. You have to buy either 10, uh, five or 15 chevapchichi. So now we're going to look at one last uh, beautiful building in the city. And then we're going to do something fun is that we're going to take the funicular for some awesome sights of the city from the Olympic mountain of Trebevich where the 80, 1984 Winter Olympics were held. So this beauty right here is the Vyechnica or the city hall of Sarajevo and it is probably the most magnificent and the most beautiful building in Sarajevo. It was built during Austro-Hungarian times uh, by a guy who oversaw the project, his name was Alexander Vitek, and the building was opened in 1896. 
Vitek proposed a pseudo Moorish architectural design and as you can see it's an ideal design that incorporates both Eastern and Western design elements. So in my opinion as well this is probably the single most beautiful building in the city. Now unfortunately on the 25th of August 1992 uh, during the last war uh, shelling by the Serbian forces occupying the city uh, set this building ablaze. It has burned down and most of the very historic and very unique uh, books that were housed in this building couldn't be saved. Fortunately in 2014 uh, the Vicenza, after long lasting renovations has been reopened to the public once again and visitors coming to Sarajevo now such as this group of tourists right there can enjoy the beauty of the Vicenza once again. Now I forgot one more site and then we are going to the funicular. Uh, we are going to the bridge where the first world war has started and then the funicular and then we're talking again about the MR2. Okay guys, so that bridge right there that I'm looking at right now used to be called the Princeps Bridge. Right now it's called the Latin Bridge. And it's the site where a dude called Gavrilo Princip shot the Austro-Hungarian Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife. And it is the event that sparked World War I. So definitely a very historic site right there. So now I'm gonna turn back, head back to the funicular. We're getting into the funicular, seeing some sights, and as I said, talk about the MR2 a bit. So one more view, and let's go back. Okay guys, so we are in the funicular and it's beautiful and silent inside. It was a bit crowded, but I managed to get in. And as you can see, this is going to be an awesome opportunity to show you the city from this awesome viewpoint that is the Sarajevo funicular. So while we are in the funicular and we are looking at these lovely landscapes, I'm going to talk to you about what's going on with the AW11. So a little bit of a status update. The car is pretty much ready. As you probably know, the carbs have been tuned. The car runs beautifully. Uh, the air fuel ratios are awesome. I have rebuilt all of my uh, struts. So the car is pretty much ready. And what is holding me back are the brakes. The brakes uh, seem to have been uh, a bit cursed on this car and they have been delaying the build constantly. The first thing that was delaying uh, the MR2 were the discs and pads that I had to order from Italy and waited two months for them to arrive. Uh, I couldn't get anything online from eBay or from anyone anywhere else when it comes to brake discs and pads because they're heavy and the, cheap, the cheapest shipping I could get over here of brake discs was around $1,000. And that of course doesn't make sense. So right now I do have the brake discs and pads, but what I, what I have done is I have taken the entire braking system. So uh, the calipers, the steering knuckles, uh, the brake pistons and everything else, I have taken it apart and it's all been taken to a shop here to do a restoration. When I say restoration, I'm talking about blasting everything, galvanizing everything, and then painting everything. Now the deal is that the only place in this tiny country that does galvanization is a huge uh, factory that does it on an industrial scale and my tiny bit of parts simply ends up being a part of a huge batch. 
and I was super super unlucky because my batch of parts was separated into two batches of parts so almost everything is ready it's galvanized but a, a few calipers are left and I'm waiting for those another unlucky thing was that the fitting kit for my brake, brake pads couldn't be reused it was super rusty and I had to order that from the local Toyota dealership as well so that is another week or two of waiting time so here you can see what the brakes look disassembled how they looked before and here is how they look now once they have been blasted and galvanized really pretty right so what what i hope to happen is that the the rest of my batch of parts is going to be finished next week and once that is finished i'm going to paint everything myself and then have it all rebuilt i have also bought all new seals uh, all new uh, pistons i bought this from big red on ebay and i also bought some goodrich braking lines so the braking system should be pretty neat so that's it when it comes to the mr2 what's coming up in terms of, in terms of videos there's going to be some fun stuff i'm going to do a carb tuning video and a few other videos as well but that's going to happen i hope once the car is finally being driven because i'm really not in the mood of doing anything else other than putting the suspension and the brakes on the car and finally driving it a bit so let's talk about sarajevo some more as you can see from the footage Sarajevo is pretty much surrounded by mountains. Uh, so Bosnia is pretty much a mountains country. I think about 80% of the country is mountains and Sarajevo is surrounded by many mountains and it was the site of the 80, 1984 Winter Olympics because it had so many mountains. And right now we are climbing up to a mountain called Trebevic where we are going to see the original bobsled track of the 1984 Winter Olympics. <laughs> I have no idea. Does it go all the way? I think it should. I tried cycling down it once yeah. and it was there's an uphill part, you gotta go uphill, so I, I just quit. I'm not really fit. <laughs> so I don't know, I'll try again now this time with a with a camera on. <laughs> yeah. Look, yeah. <laughs> me <laughs> me too. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so we are on the bobsled track and this is the same site where in 1984 in the Winter Olympics Olympic competitors inside their bobs were sliding down this thing at breakneck speeds. Breakneck? Breakneck? Breakneck speeds, not breakneck. Anyway, so and right now I, a complete cycling noob, with a bicycle in questionable mechanical state and trying to cycle down it. This is going to be very conservative, but nevertheless, it's a very cool thing to cycle down a bobsled track. As you can see right now, the bobsled track is more of a canvas for local graffiti artists than anything else, but it's still really really fun to cycle down this thing if you're a better cyclist than i am if you're more experienced more capable and have a bicycle that is in really good shape with some really good brakes you can definitely cycle down this thing 
at some higher speeds. Tony Nash, Robin Dixon probably won the greatest upset in the history of two-man box sprints at the Innsbruck Olympic Fair. 21-24 split, 21-15 on the left at that time. Pretty good line. Della Hunty driving a pretty good course. There's his split time out of seven. 33, considerably off the pace, 33, 75, 65 miles an hour here. Now 200 degrees to the left chain. if you ever do come and do try to cycle down this thing as you can see there's tourists there's people on this so don't be crazy don't be unsafe be safe and be cautious Really cool thing about this place is that it's pretty quiet and the bobsled track just goes all the way through these beautiful woods and if you're interested in woods and hiking Bosnia is definitely the place for you because we have a lot of awesome mountains where you can hike and see some truly incredible uh, pretty much still untouched nature in some places even So I did tell that guy there's an uphill part, but there doesn't seem to be an oh there it is. Okay, so this is this is the uphill part and I think right after this is where the bobsled track is going to end. Because I think this was the part that was supposed to slow down the bobs. Come on, stamina! Mechanics stamina. Oh shit, I've got no stamina. It just keeps going uphill from here and there's some branches and bushes and whatnot and I'm just gonna stop because I think it's time to finally end this video and this is an appropriate place okay I have yet to catch my breath and this is what I get for spending my free time in the garage instead of the gym. So guys, that's pretty much it when it comes to Bosnia and Sarajevo. And from this point onward, when someone asks me where I'm from, I'm just going to copy and paste this video's link as a response. So I really haven't done videos like this before and I hope you guys liked it. As always, comments, input, feedback, in the comments section is really appreciated and will help me make better content. So I hope you had fun watching this, I hope you learned something and now when you're sitting in the pub you know with your friends and when Bosnia comes up, which it never will, uh, you can pretend to be an expert on Bosnia and just you know spit out awesome facts I have taught you today. So as always thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to share, comment and subscribe and I'll be seeing you soon again with more fun stuff on the D4A channel.